Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of No Man's Sky. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault here today. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and don't forget to leave a comment and a like on the video down below. Let me know what you think of everything, and share us on social media. The exposure is greatly appreciated. So, We've been playing Dying Light for a while. Now, I've got several different characters. I've been playing this game for years off and on. And this is one of the uh, longer stints I've played. And it's been very enjoyable. Now, what we're going to talk about today are five fun things to do inside the game that, uh, you know, don't require any story or anything like that. These are just things to do when you log on. You don't feel like um, doing anything special that day. You don't want to track down the Atlas Path, or look for Artemis, or or any of that kind of stuff that's story-related in the game, just fun stuff to do. So let's get going. Alright, so we are going to talk about the first thing, one of my favorite things to do in this game, actually, when I am uh, just looking to, you know, kill some time and have a good old time, and that is ship hunting. Now, ship hunting is basically traveling from system to system, looking for exotic or just generally cool looking ships that you want to add to your collection. You can have a total of nine uh, spacecraft altogether, plus you can add four to your squadron, so that really gives you uh, 13 unique ships that you can have in your collection. Four of them you don't have access to personally, but they will join you in a dogfight. And as you run around, you'll find all these different ships that you um, can add to your collection ships like my Cardinal Sin here, my uh, Yellow Lead Better. There's my, of course, my Living Ship, but that's a different story. But even later on, you can farm that um, by just buying more eggs from the Anomaly. Here's my Blue Jay. That's kind of cool, right? And then I got my food truck, so named because, of course, he is full of all the food stuff I have done during those cooking videos. So. That's always a blast. Let's go ahead and take a look at the galaxy map real quick. And we'll show you what you're looking for when you want to go ship hunting. And how to go about it. So, take off. Just leave the atmosphere real quick. And we'll pull up the galaxy map. Now... Ooh, a black hole. Okay. Well, we'll be going there later. But for now... Alright, I hit this. What the hell? Alright. Don't do whatever I just did. We're gonna have to go through that black hole thing again, probably? No? Alright, so I'm gonna hit the circle button to look around. And you're gonna look for, if you look on the left-hand side, you have that... Aftal... and all? Aftanol? You see the Gek. It's a Gek system that's two star, and over on the far right, it's a number one on conflict, which is eh. You want one that's got three stars on the left and a number one in conflict on the right. And this can take a little while to locate. I'm not going to lie. But here's another option you have is a pirate system. You can tell it's a pirate system because it doesn't have any stars. It has that little skull there. So that's another great place to look for ships. So we're over there now. So either of those type of places are the best. Now, if you're looking for a hauler type, like you want a nice big hauler, your best chances of finding one of those is in a Gek system. If you're looking for a fighter ship, you want to go to a Viking system. And an Explorer, you're going to want to go to a Korvax system. And the... Uh, all of them have shuttles that appear, and you do have a chance of exotics and solar ships appearing as well. So, now your best bet, pound for pound, percentage-wise, for locating interesting ships is here in a pirate system. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean a, uh, an exotic, but you do have a higher chance of an exotic appearing here. But that also counts towards any S-class vessels. And we'll just sit for one or two ships that come in right off the bat just to see what we got. 
you also seem to have a higher chance of solar ships appearing in these locations so that's kind of cool as well now a lot of times if you ship hunt you may want to go into single player mode uh, just because if you do find a system especially if you're uh, looking for a very rare exotic and using coordinates that you found online or something you definitely want to go into single player because you never know there might be somebody else looking for that same ship in the system and that screws you up a little bit you know in your timing so look at that an s2133 fighter ship definitely not a bad looking ship overall but um not something i'd want for my squadron over here we got a c class so there's a couple of the initial you can always wait in one of these oh and there's a uh, solar ship you can always wait in one of the star um, things here, the space stations, and look. Or you can get out into your ship and look for a trade post. <coughs> so, a uh, thing that to do also when you're looking for these ships is just kind of exit your ship, wait a couple rounds, get in your ship, exit again, and then reload to save, and you'll get a fresh batch coming in so we're gonna activate if you don't have a trade scanner I recommend installing one on your ship because as you can see it will point us in the direction of a trading outpost and a lot of times these places have a better chance of an exotic and S-level ship appearing there than they do on the actual space station itself so you know, you can go around from system to system doing this. Pirate systems, three-star systems. They don't have to be three ones. They don't even have to be three threes. It can be anything. But, again, it's all numbers game. And the better your chances are of acquiring a good ship, the less time it will take to find one. And this can be tedious, but it's also kind of a nice zen, easy way to spend an afternoon. Just kind of chilling out, going from place to place, a little exploring discovering new uh, solar systems. Maybe find a place that's really cool and you want to build a base there. You're like, oh wow, that's a unique uh, looking... Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that right there. We just got a squid ship. He's flying around out there. Look at that. This is a completely random discovery. And I am so happy for this. Now the trick is going to be to get him to land which he hasn't done yet. Wow. The rare ship in the game. I have uh, never found one in the wild, I don't believe. I think every one I've found, I've done by following coordinates from the uh, No Man's Sky coordinate exchange or, you know, YouTube videos and that sort. And most of those are made from the No Man's Sky coordinate exchange too, so that ship may have hijacked uh, this video, which I'm fine with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> At least temporarily. That's so cool. Now, the thing is, I don't know if I have uh, room in my squadron for him or if I'm one in person. I think I'm going to take him personally. That's so cool. So I will allow another round to land. And uh, if he doesn't land in that round, we'll start doing the jumping in and out of the ship and reloading the save. So I'll have to sit tight. Again, this requires patience. Lots and lots, infinite amounts of patience. And if you look up in the sky, you can see what's flying around, fixing the land and not land. Interesting stuff there, but nothing special. And there's our four ships on the second round. Okay. One thing we're going to do first before we do the jump in and out of the ship is we're going to get on the ship and we're going to take it off of a landing pad because I believe that lessens your ships that land by one. I think we get four when he's on there, but if we're not on there, we can get five, so. Almost 
screwed that up. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick reload of the autosave we just made a few seconds ago. And we'll see what happens. Fun times indeed. So yeah, this is literally the first jump I made today. I can't tell you how many times I've gone from system to system looking for a squid, just randomly jumping. Um, again, not following coordinates. I mean, while it's fun to follow the coordinates and all that, and, you know, get yourself a squid or two or five or whatever it is you're looking for, there's also a lot of fun, too, with the actual art of explore you know the the act of exploring and locating one yourself which is just so cool uh, so we got one landing two landing three landing four landing and see so yeah it allows five ships to land now of course none of them are the squid None of them are even S-Class. They're all just pretty much garbage right now, but that's okay. That is kind of a cool-looking... Excuse me, solar ship, but... I've already got one I'm happy with. It's full of food. Completely maxed out. I'm not looking to uh, make a new one. All right, so let's move on here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You can hear those solar ships make a different sound when they uh, take off and land. All right, let's see the squid, man. Where are you, buddy? I know you're up there somewhere. That's not it. None of those are it. about one of the ugliest haulers you can get right there. Looks like it's made from poorly put together Legos. So they're a cool little seven wing uh, fighter ship. fighter ship cool we're about to get a super heated, heated rainstorm so that's always nice fortunately I'm protected for that all right so we're gonna do a reload Well, just as promised, there's a superheated rainstorm. Thank you, game. This will make it extra challenging to see, but not impossible. Definitely not impossible. Alright, one, two, three. Look at all these, oh crap, look at all these solar ships. We got four of them right now, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, four out of the five ships are all solar. It's kind of crazy numbers. Let's clear our vision up a little bit here. I prefer to stay up top like that, just because you get a bird's eye view, you can turn around in a you know, in a circle and see on all sides of you exactly uh, what's landing. 
but during a rainstorm or a, you know radiation storm whatever the uh, blurring on the screen can be quite distracting and annoying yeah, we got a fighter we got a shuttle another solar can't even see that well in the sky but neither of those looks like a squid another shuttle or not shuttle yeah not going well going to sit tight here and wait because that ship will land eventually and it will be ours it's not off and there it is check it out it's pretty awesome looking hello my friend trade is acceptable I thank you so we're going to go ahead and make an offer for his ship. It's not very well decked out, but we got plenty of expansion slots for it. And we got plenty of money to buy it at $10 million. Thank you very much. And there we've got our first squid ship for this character. Hoorah! And that wasn't too bad. So yeah, I think this video morphed into uh, <laughs> locating a squid ship, but you saw how long it took. It wasn't that, that bad. What have we been doing this for about 15 minutes now, you know, with the reloads and all that. Um, so definitely not too bad. So yeah, well, let's look at some other fun stuff to do in the game. We'll keep this going. I'll do a separate video on this later. All right, so another fun thing you can do that's also a little bit time consuming and highly resource consuming is base building in this game. There's a, a ton of resources available for base building. And we'll take a look through some of them here uh, from your portable deployable technologies to your large structures, timber, stone, alloy, Maybe you've got some advanced technology there. Power and industry. And then furnishings. Lots in there. Decorations. Lots in there. Exotic decorations. Oh my goodness, look at all that. Decals, wall art. And then these are the old legacy structures from the uh, old style of building. So there's a lot to choose from. These things can be acquired in many different ways. Uh, some decorative things come from doing the derelict freighter missions. Some come from spending Quicksilver on the Anomaly. Uh, most of them are gotten through salvaged uh, data modules and trading them in on the Anomaly. And then others still come from special events. Uh, you might find posters from doing the uh, uh, expedition, so forth and so on. So there's a lot of ways to customize your base build it up and um, you know you can re rename it like this I just named this one after the uh, squid ship I just got and there he is down there a little green squid although he looks a little yellow now he looked green earlier sometimes it's hard to say but you know captured a screenshot of him Upload it. The uh, screenshot only works for yourself. It doesn't work for other players, unfortunately. It'd be kind of cool if it did. But there it is. And, you know, while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and um, go into photo mode so you guys can look at the bottom left-hand corner and see what the coordinates are for this planet so you can come here and get a squid of your own. I'll look for green squid as the base name. 
You can just park here and hang out in relative comfort, looking out of these glass windows at the different uh, landing pads. That's a little too much for you. I put in this little spot up here, which gives you a slightly better way to do it. And it's got a quick exit right there in case you see something you want and you want to just jump out and get it. And it also put in a landing pad so you can actually land your ship up high like that, have easy access to it, and you don't need to worry about um, taking up one of the spaces down here. That's two down. Three to go. Let's see what else is a lot of fun. Well, if you've been watching me for any uh, length of time, you'll know what I'm about to say next based on my location alone. I'm here at my big old McDonald's farm with all my nutrient processors and my cousin over here. Say hi, buddy. Uh-oh. Anyway, he's not in the mood to wave right now. But that would be cooking. Cooking is a lot of fun in this game, um, especially once you figure out how to get the resources you need to make the basics and then taking those basics into more advanced recipes and as you can see here we've done quite a bit of cooking we've got basic stuff from pie cases to churn butter and omelets to fruity ice creams and mystery meat pies stews root juices bread donuts i mean we got all kinds of craziness in here a baked cheese tart. Yeah, lots of fun. And we always keep on hand a buttload of the basics that we need just so we can easily, and I recommend doing that yourself, but easily go ahead and whip up any recipes that we're looking to make without having to go farm too much stuff. Now, there's some of the stuff, and then we also have more here in the ingredient bins clarified oils and milks and creams and sugars and honeys and oh my goodness the the list is endless i've done a lot of cooking i've done i think three videos on it maybe four and i'm still nowhere near done with all the recipes that are available so a lot of fun i recommend doing it uh, it's a great source of nanites you can feed them to your frigates and see how it affects their traits your living frigates that is and see how it impacts them. You might be able to customize these guys in ways that you didn't know you could. You might have a frigate that's kind of halfway lame, and then all of a sudden you feed them the right piece of food, and boom, it's a super living frigate, and you're so happy to have it on board. All right, well, let's see what else is a lot of fun. All right, a couple, uh, couple of nights ago, I put out a video on some cool creatures that you can make as companions, and I got to tell you, that's one of the fun things to do also in this game is to just go around explore and see what you can find companion wise let's take a look at my companion list right now i've got a full uh, what is it 18 of them i believe all together there's some very interesting looking ones in here a lot of these are found on those glitch like planets this guy <laughs> he just runs around farting out purple smoke behind him it's hilarious this thing looks like some beans, a flying worm, butterfly. This was a twit or this was a reward for the expedition, as was this and this. Or maybe they were from Twitch streams, I don't remember, but they were definitely rewards. This crazy looking thing, oh man. Yeah. This neat uh triceratops like creature. This guy's another oddball. I mean, look at him just he kind of reminds me of this guy a little bit because he floats around in a non-conventional way. You know, he's not flying around like a bird with wings or anything like that. And we got a few more here that we got. This big, uh, big body, little head guy with the cool tail. Um, this awesome robotic companion. Did a video on how we got him. This goofball who's probably going to go because I'm not real happy with him. Uh, some kind of theropod looking creature this flying owl whatever with a 
Man in the Iron Mask look to him. And then Doughboy, my world-famous hunk of pizza dough that just, yeah, you can ride him around, which is pretty awesome. So going out looking for these guys is a lot of fun. And then once you get them, you can uh, wait a little bit of time. They will be able to uh, lay an egg for you. When you get that egg, you can go to the Anomaly, put it in the uh, egg sequencer up there, which is near Kronos on the uh, right-hand side if you're facing inward toward the Anomaly from the... Uh, entrance but anyway it's over to the right there you can put it in the sequencer and then add different uh resources to it to give different mutation developments you might be able to alter uh, color a little bit temperament um, that sort of thing i think how it processes food is another so require you know I, I don't know there's just a lot of different um options in that regard so yeah, definitely a lot of fun. We will be doing a video on taking Doughboy's egg and seeing how big we can uh, make Doughboy. Because if you look at him right now, he's cool and all. But he's definitely not that big. It's just, I don't know. There's just something so goofy about this. It's hilarious. And most of these guys you can ride, you know, which is kind of neat. Um, let's look at... Yeah, check out this guy. Can we ride him? Yes, we can. He's just... <laughs> uh, whoa, look, we can bank on him a little bit. Woohoo! Do some air donuts. All right. These companions aren't always the most useful things in the world, but I'll tell you one thing that they're cool with is, like, like the riding ability, right? Especially if you get something like this guy who is insanely fast. If I want to traverse, you know, look around for stuff on the planet, this is definitely an option. Not as big and bulky as an exocraft if you can't bring your... Whoa! Can't bring your freighter into a system or can't access your exocraft for whatever reason. And you have a companion that's quick, doesn't have to be one of these guys, but any of them that's quick, then yeah, it gives you another option. So that's pretty sweet. So companions are definitely a blast. All right, and last but not least, one of the greatest joys I get in this game, one of the things that is the most fun to do, is to just hop into my spaceship or my freighter now that it's equipped with some monstrously heavy duty. Uh, uh, hyperdrives and explore and by explore I mean just find a system that catches your eye for some reason you could be looking for something specific like a uh, a gex system you know with a certain amount of stars to it look at this we have a system with a black hole and it's a Corvex pirate system and it's got quite a few planets so you hop into your uh, ship and in this case it's my freighter we'll fly over there and one of the first things we'll do when we get there is scan the system and then upload it so that the discovery of it belongs to us unless somebody's already been here and it says first contact so looks like we are the first ones to get here which is awesome go in activate the planetary probe Upload all of it, then we'll look around and say, what do we want to look at here? Look, oh, an incandescent planet, a erupting planet. Those are always kind of exciting. Miasmatic, a barren planet, hyperborean, and a glacial planet. So, you know, you might be looking for a specific resource that you want to uh, be able to mine, you know. And in this case, we have a glacial planet. So if I wanted to go ahead and set up a dioxide mine that would be a good place to uh you know check out and see if we can do it there um it, maybe we're just looking for a specific interesting creature of some sort you know or we need to kill a bunch of creatures or a bunch of sentinels you know we can look for a aggressive sentinel planet or a planet with a heavy amount of fauna if it's for killing creatures 
hop into our trusty regular old uh, festival or vessel and we'll pick a spot to land like this awful sounding erupting planet it's got pyrite high sentinels activated copper and salt on it now if we were looking for a pyrite mine or a salt mine or even activated copper this would definitely be a good option for us but at this point we're not so anyways thanks for joining me once again for another episode of no man's sky as always i'm captain beefy with the game vault if you enjoyed this video at all please leave a like on it down below and a comment let me know what are some of your favorite things to do to pass the time and don't forget to also share us on social media and if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications i do put up content uh, pretty much daily on this channel especially for no man's sky lately and i will be uh doing some other stuff that's going to lead into an upcoming game that I am greatly excited for. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Got to do the obligatory wave, right? Bye!